Hi there, I'm Lee Redhead, a writer and member of Sisters in Crime Australia. Welcome to Scarlet Stiletto Bites, scintillating short stories by Australian women. Our weekly podcast is designed for busy lives. Each murder mystery is short, but not always sweet. Expect twisted tales, quirky humour, imagination and a frisson of feminism. Sisters in Crime Australia's Scarlet Stiletto Awards were established in 1994 to unearth criminal literary talent. We're producing these podcasts of winning stories to celebrate the sisters' 30th anniversary ceremony in Melbourne in late 2023. The concept designer and narrator is fellow sister, actor, barrister, broadcaster and best-selling true crime author, Susanna Lobez. Hello, Susanna here. Today's story deals with an unlikely criminal and makes us wonder when someone can form a criminal intent and when they are too young, too naive or, or simply too innocent. Amy Sandal by Judith Bridge 2014 First Prize Scarlet Stiletto Award. Amy's stout body moves forwards at speed. Her big toe, however, makes friends with an obstacle in its dusty path and stops for a chat. Amy lands face first in the wheat stubble, mouth open in surprise, inadvertently welcoming hot, crunchy dirt onto her teeth and tongue. She looks at her toe and her mouth widens into a black O of dismay. Half of her big toenail is sticking out at a scary angle. There'll be hell to pay when she gets home. She is not allowed to play in the paddocks wearing sandals. She's supposed to wear closed-in shoes. Dad says there are snakes. Amy lets loose her. A few sobs from the pain and anticipated scolding. But remembers that big girls don't cry. And hiccups to a stop. Then tentatively flicks the skew toenail. Although it hurts, she can't resist doing it again. Sucking the end of one brown plait as she teases the nail and winces. The obstacle stands up proudly in the dull earth. Probably a bit of brick, Amy thinks. There are always lumps of bricks in the paddocks, leftovers from when giants built their castles in Karnakara, which were then destroyed when the dinosaurs came. She pulls the obstacle from its bed. It isn't a brick, but a very small, partly gold-coloured, partly dirt-coloured sandal. Definitely a sandal from the time when the Japanese invaded Australia during the Second World War. A young Japanese girl lived in this paddock in a rice paper house, which you could eat when you finished living in it. The girl's feet had been bound from when she was a baby, so she couldn't run away from her dad, who beat her every day with one of those big brooms people used to smack the dirt out of carpets. She was forbidden to run around outside in her sandals, just like Amy, because of snakes and probably dragons too. Not that she could really run with her tiny little feet, so she more or less stumbled around. The Japanese girl's sandals were not made of rubber, but gold, because she was so light and small that, well, she had to weigh herself down every day or she would float off into the sky. One day, when the Japanese girl's dad was away slicing people's heads off with his sword, she stumbled outside in her golden sandals and tried to run away from home. She became dehydrated and disoriented in the heat because she had forgotten to take a water bottle and wasn't wearing sunscreen or a hat and her kimono was 200 layers thick, 
tied in a series of inc- intricate knots that she couldn't untie by herself. Her heavy kimono dragged her into the loose dust and all the way down to China, where she bought a bamboo hat and stumbled around happily for the rest of her life. Like Cinderella, the Japanese girl left behind one golden sandal that slipped off her foot as she hurtled eagerly towards China and away from Kanakara and her horrible dad. When the girl's dad returned from battle, his sword bloody, smiling from killing so many innocents, he couldn't find his daughter anywhere. So he committed Hare Krishna on himself in the stomach because he had to save his face. Amy knows all about Japanese history from her best friend Miyu, who has a Japanese dad and a hopeless mum. Miyu Watanabe lives on the farm next door, which is a 25-minute bike ride away. Dad says their farm's not good for growing anything, except rocks and half-breed morons. Sometimes during the school holidays, Amy helps Miyu sell melons from the Watanabe's roadside store, which is her her second favourite thing in the world. Dad says, what kind of fool would grow melons in the driest place in the world? But Amy knows that the Sahara Desert in Africa is drier than Kanakara. In the Sahara Desert, you can't cry, even if you really want to, because the sun burns the tears up before they fall out of your eyes. Geography is her favourite thing in the world. Amy turns the small, heavy sandal over in her hands. Dirt rubs off and more and more gold appears. The, The sandal is bumpy. Around the curve of the toe, there are a few sharp sticking out bits, like the edge of a lid when you take it off the tin with a can opener. Hopping home on her good foot... She cradles the sandal carefully. Dad is out. With a sigh of relief, she hops the sandal over to the kitchen tap. The dirt washes away and she holds the bright gold sandal up to the streaky window. The colour makes her shiver with happiness. She hops to her bedroom, wraps the sandal in an old T-shirt and places it in her hidey hole. She's not allowed to keep secrets in her room, but there's one place Dad doesn't know about. Dad says Amy's toenail will go black and drop off. Amy squirms with excitement. She can't wait to show Miyu her toe and the sandal. Miyu will be the only other person in the whole wide world who gets to see the sandal. But Dad sees it too a month later. When Amy returns home after her daily paddock exploration, he is waiting for her at the kitchen table, his face scrunched up with anger. The gold sandal stands pert and proud on the table, glowing softly into the amber dregs of the whiskey bottle. Amy's heart thrums. Her breathing becomes shallow and fast. Her forehead burns hot. Dad has discovered her hidey hole. She can't bear the unfairness of Dad anymore, not for another minute. Mayu's parents don't search her room or make her keep secrets. Snatching the sandal from the table, Amy roars in a deep voice she didn't know she had. Dad lunges for her, but Amy is quicker today and slams him in the face with the sandal. One of the sharp bits slides into the soft space above Dad's eyebrow and he slumps to the floor. Blood pools around his head. Amy calls the police, as she's been taught to do in an emergency. Their number is on the fridge. Then she mixes up a big jug of lemon cordial with ice, because the police will be thirsty in this heat. 
Amy has to go to court and explain what happened. Miyu's hopeless mum makes her a new dress for her court appearance, yellow with blue flowers. She wants Amy to call her Denise, but Amy can't bring herself to call a grown-up by their first name, so they settle on Mrs W, short for Mrs Watanabe. Mrs W gives Amy's damp hand a squeeze before Amy takes a stand. When asked questions, Amy explains to the judge that she isn't allowed to tell secrets, but the judge says it's okay to tell now. The judge looks very sad when Amy reveals her secrets. When it's all over, Mrs W takes Amy to the W's farm and tells the reporters outside the house, no comment, but they write a story anyway. Abused woman murders father goes free. Amy Henderson, a 40-year-old woman with a mental age of seven, murdered her father last Friday. Judge Sally Morrison was moved to tears when Amy revealed the extent of physical and psychological abuse she had suffered at the hands of her father since early childhood. Following the special court session, Amy, who has no living relatives, was released into the custody of temporary guardians. Judge Morrison said it would be inappropriate for Amy to be detained in either an adult prison or a juvenile detention centre. Amy will instead be monitored by a probation officer and a psychologist and is not considered to be a danger to society. The sandal is removed from Dad's head and the police return it to Amy at the W's house. She's told it's not actually a sandal but a gold nugget and it's worth a lot of money. Mrs W takes Amy and Miu to the library in town and shows them pictures of other gold nuggets, including a hand-shaped one called the Hand of Faith. Miyu finds some photographs of nuggets which are named after the people who found them. Mrs W signs the bottom of the library form as Amy's guardian and the librarian gives her a membership card. Amy takes out books about faraway countries. Miyu says if Amy's smile was any bigger, her face would split open and they crack up laughing. Mr W explains to Amy that she can sell her nugget or keep it in a safe at the bank or put it in a museum so lots of people can enjoy it. The decision is hers. Amy and Miyu discuss the options for days. They decide on the museum option. The nugget needs a name and Mrs W suggests Amy Sandal. Everyone likes that idea, so the museum makes up a plaque with the name Amy Sandal, where it was found, Kanakara, Western Australia, and who found it? Henderson, Amy. Life is very different at the W's, and Amy feels good, yes sirree. No one goes into her room without permission. It's not her job to cook dinner every night and wash up afterwards, but she washes up anyway because she wants to. Miyu dries the dishes and they mess around, but not too much or they might drop something. The W's ask Amy if she'd like to look after the roadside stall while Miyu is at school and Amy says, Would I ever? She's in charge of stacking the melons in pyramids, which are in Egypt, and using the till. Mr W gives her a mobile phone so she can call the house if she needs help. Amy takes her library books to the stall and learns all about the world when she's not serving customers. Mrs S sees Amy taking a pill and asks if she can see the packet. Amy gives it to her, and when Mrs W realises what the pills are, tears well in her eyes. 
She tells Amy she doesn't need to take them anymore. But I have to stop the babies, Amy replies, and Mrs W says there won't be any babies now. They throw the packet in the rubbish bin together. Amy's glad because it was hard to remember to take a pill every single day. Mrs W has a little cry after that. Amy tells her big girls don't cry, but Mrs W says sometimes they do, and Amy can cry any time she feels sad. But Amy doesn't ever feel sad with the Ws because they have a happy farm. After many, many months of paperwork, Amy inherits Dad's sad farm. Mr W explains to Amy that she can sell her farm or keep it. The decision is hers. Amy and Miyu discuss the option for days. They decide on the selling option. The farm fetches a huge amount of money because prospective buyers think they will find another gold sandal in the dirt. Amy thinks this is funny because she knows that the Japanese girl from the Second World War must have taken the other sandal with her in order to buy the bamboo hat and live happily ever after. The money from the sale of the farm goes into Amy's newly created bank account and she can withdraw money whenever she likes. She buys a world globe that spins so fast it makes her eyes go funny. Amy tells the W's that she wants to pay for them all to go on holiday to the Sahara Desert so that they can try to cry, even if they're not sad. But maybe she'll wait until she's a bit older. Mrs W says that Amy has made a very wise decision and Amy's smile is so wide that Miu says she can see the sun shining through her teeth. The end. Thanks so much for listening. We'd love your feedback. Subscribe for free to Scarlet Stiletto Bites wherever you get podcasts. And do visit our website, sistersincrime.org.au.